Gosha Pedo. Oh, this is an interesting story, right? So, um, over the, over the last few weeks, um, or no, over the last few, yeah, over the last few weeks actually, I think for me personally, I've heard stories, um, in you know, through the rumor mill and through people just talking in the industry and in the scene overall, that there was rumors that supposedly, um, Gosha Rubinski, um, the influential streetwear, let's say menswear fashion designer, um, is suspected of allegedly, right, um, uh, being involved in some illicit behavior with minors. And at the time, it didn't really make any sense. But when it was explained to me, when I heard the rumors um, through the grapevine, it, it was explained to me that there was a time, I think a few months ago, where it was um, news came out that uh, Gosha was sort of like um, shuttering down his namesake brand and concentrating only on like his kind of creative pursuits and stuff. And it came as a bit of a surprise, people were thinking, because, you know, at the time, Gosha Jinsky was being sold in, you know, in in most other street locations, because obviously the Com de Garçon group had invested quite heavily in the production and manufacturing of his brand and in general he kind of tapped into a side of the kind of the youth market a very 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 young and impressionable you youth market but a side of the the young kind of streetwear market that were you know that were happy to spend i don't know let's say 60 or 70 pounds 60 plus pounds on a t-shirt um and they kind of all kind of like consecrated around this kind of like you know idea of um eastern block skateboarding kind of aesthetic right so the baggy trousers the baggy shirts the muted colors, um, the high water jeans, blah, 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 blah. So he kind of tapped into a very niche specific market. So from the outside looking in, it did seem a bit weird that he was kind of like shuttering his brand down, even though a lot of, you know, during the time, a lot of other brands had kind of come up and had kind of maybe taken over his number one spot. Um, consistently, whenever you checked his phrase brand on Dover Street Market, things were still selling out, right? Now, of course, you know, just going on Dover Street Market and looking at the brands that they back and then seeing it as sold out isn't necessarily a marker of success because you never know what sort of um, shenanigans are going on in the background. But by and large, it's a bit of a surprise by everybody involved, right? Why is Gosha shutting down his brand? Then it kind of transpires that this story came out, a alleged story that he's kind of getting involved with illicit behavior with minors. And now another story came out where a, where a prospective model kind of detailed his experience um, communicating with Gosha Brzezinski uh, through his social media so your social media account on instagram and it kind of seems a bit fishy what he's kind of getting up to it doesn't seem the correct way to go about things again i don't like to talk about gossip on this channel i don't like to talk about things involving people's business i just think in general it's always good to kind of extract the lessons that can be applied to our lives in general from these things that happen in with people in the public eye because again i think i just think they're uh they are a magnifying glass in things to happening in society overall right you take even the raheem sterling issue you take this issue having a wood Kosherzynski, there are things that happen within our own um, environments or our own communities that we can kind of take lessons from and apply it to. So this story, I think uh, G GQ do a good way, a good job of kind of like highlighting the overall topics, the overall impression I have of it, uh, the overall um, the overall events that led up to the situation that we're in now. And I'm gonna kind of read a little bit of the of the article here, so you guys can kind of have a bit of a lowdown on what happened. But I'm sure most of you know. Um, the extent of the story but this is on gq here uh, gq.com um, it says gosha brzezinski has alleged inappropriate casting spotlights the fashion industry's messy morals written by cam wolf so over the weekend a 16 year old boy alleged that russian streetwear designer gosha brzezinski uh, pressured him into sending explicit photos of himself the boy jan something uh, silver uh, silver Sil Verling posted conversations he'd had with Rubczynski over Instagram and the WhatsApp Messenger app that appeared to show the, per, the designer prodding for nude photos. Shortly after the initial accusations, another identified male surfaced through the allegation that Rubczynski requested lewd photos. Rubczynski categorically denied the accusations in statements and said that the conversation about casting uh, the boy in a, rush, in a runway show was manipulated to make the designer request look malicious. In the screenshots Silverling posted, Rubczynski makes repeated urgent requests for photos. Send me now something from the bathroom what a message reads man yo rojinski is nasty man what a nasty man bro why are you oh um uh silvering uh have hey pronounced this kid's name uh writes back that he can't because the bathroom is in his mother's mother's room and rojinski aggressively pushes back you can go to the bathroom and do it quickly please that's not really aggressively he's just telling him to go do it to be honest. i think it can wolf used to chill i don't believe your mom come to the bathroom together with you <laughs> 
That's aggressive. Um, representative of Rajinsky defended the designer by saying that statement by Representative Rajinsky was fucking horrendous, by the way. Like, if anyone, if, 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 if public figures, because I think I feel a lot of people say that um, if you're involved in like a um, uh, public outrage sort of uh, scenario, that a lot of PR agents are telling their representative to like take a couple deep breaths before they post anything on social, like before you immediately reply, like take a couple deep breaths, walk away, and then come back again. Um, and I think. PR firms, PR agencies need to do that too. I think they try too hard for demonstration because obviously they know they know what's they know what's at stake, right? If they if their client suddenly is accused of what they're accused of and it looks like it actually did happen, then that could miss, that could mean the end of their job too. I get it, but you guys need to chill out, um, PR guys. So it says uh, their statement was like, "Gosha has been casting by Instagram for many years now." Representative told GQ in an email, "It is a normal practice nowadays. We always ask." Uh, to face photos in full length and topless sometimes in underwear as are, are required in order to understand the volume of hips when i <laughs> ask if this instance would affect rajinsky's cast models moving forward representative said we are certainly going to be reviewing how we cast shows in the future to minimize the danger of this sort of thing happening which is which is of, of course we fucked up because you know justifying his behavior is fucking nuts because obviously just reading those kind of screenshots you can kind of you can you you can understand what people are reading into so this guy's a bit of a creep right now, Jinsky has um, harnessed his connection to Russian youth and street culture to create a powerful brand and say streetwear market. This is again, this is kind of objectification. It's getting a little bit SJW in this regard, but hey. In um, 2012, he partnered with Comme des Garçons, which took over sales and marketing. In a statement, Comme des Garçons President Adrian Joff said he was deeply concerned by the allegations and added that he abhorred the mob mentality on social media and of guilty and too proven innocent syndrome, which seems to be the order of the day. While I deeply deplore the abuse of power in the industry, I'm waiting for the whole truth to come out which is fine which is categorically cool i think a lot of people are getting a little bit too um hot and bothered about this whole issue because it's obviously involving very young boys but i think we have to also see that um gosha rujinski's brand pack beth and all the other things that he does or however you pronounce that brand name um they are very much centered around youth culture it's a bit weird it's a bit cringy but by and large, it is about youth culture and it doesn't necessarily cast a lot of very, very young, young, young models. And a lot of them are very willing to kind of join um, his kind of cohorts of models because it's a very strong community. It's a very strong band of kids in a similar sort of vein as palace people and people that wear Supreme. They are kind of like loyal to the to the core and if kind of Rujinsky told him to kind of jump off a bridge most of them would do it of course you don't know if you've got a position of power you should be kind of conscious of what you're doing but I think the optics look fucking nuts for good Rujinsky because you know he's asking his kid to go into a bathroom he's aggressively asking for things and I'm assuming if the kid decided to send him a, a lewd picture he wouldn't necessarily turn it down but what he's putting out there allegedly right so it looks a bit nuts but I think nowadays especially the fact that you know by and large Gosha Rudinsky's brand blew up um but um for the most part because you know he tapped into a youth market he's also very um personable on social i know a lot of people who've kind of reached out to him for internships and for all those kind of things and he's been you know he's quite quick to reply and he's very personable on on social so i think most of that stuff that they're seeing this kind of the idea that this big person his brand is requesting topless photos of people just it's, the optics look fucked up but i think if you extract it and see if what it is you know it's a youth brand centered around kids that are under 18 um kids that are under 18 are probably going to be on instagram and whatsapp if you need to communicate with them it's probably advantageous to talk to them directly as gosh rajinsky so they know it's you so they're more likely to sign on and be your model on the show there's 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 just there's a justification for what for him communicating with kids on social media and on whatsapp but there's probably not justification there's no justification at all for him asking for lewd pictures that's fucking nuts that's nasty as fuck um but again let's let the evidence kind of come out let's investigation kind of go forth and kind of or then we'll make a decision once everything's been done but i don't like this whole like council culture I'm like oh you're talking to 16 year olds asking them for their topless pictures cancelled we don't know the context of it and context is very 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 important but anyway go back to the article um Da, da, da. Since pro partnering with Jinsky is profiled with a lot of high profile brands, I don't know why. Again, I think GQR mentioned this again because they want to GQR are a little bit SJW with this. They want to kind of like oust him. So then again, in the article you've seen, they mentioned since partnering that he's collaborated with 
Burberry, Nike, Burberry, Reebok, and Adidas. All three did not immediately want to respond to a request for comment. Again, so I think um, GQ are kind of like poking and prodding and wanting to kind of get, you know, get the fuck out of here. And working directly with and talking to inspiration from youth culture has been a bedrock of Rajinsky's brand since its launch. That's Rajinsky's team argued the designer needs to be in direct contact with teenagers, which is which is understandable. If you want to be heard by the teenagers, they're, they're, um, then from then more time with them you should spend uh to listen to understand them uh gosh's brand is successful among youth because he's always works with common teens from the street which is very true even from the very first fashion collection that he done in russia that was kind of like i think he did it in a kind of school gym or something they're walking around in a circle you know it's just all kids from the local area and if anything he's kind of he's been the one that has been responsible for um uh, been responsible for making that kind of look trendy you know that kind of like eastern block uh dour sort of like um emasculated no impassive whatever that thing when you're really skinny cheeks sucked in look he's been the one to kind of make that shit popular so it's understandable that someone like that would be you know on social media every single day communicating with his fans or people that want to be part of that um whole community um Gosh, duh, 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 in what they understood duh. but incidents like this can create in the best of circumstances uncomfortable questions around the fashion industry operates uh where should the line be drawn how young is too young what's acceptable to ask and who contacts whom but how young is too young is a bit stupid because you have these brands that are now you know you have hype kids is an offshoot of hype beast right where they kind of uh, profile brands that are making kids making like very expensive clothing limited edition clothing for for children now morally um that could be that's that's in a very questionable realm isn't it where you're kind of you know raising up your children to be you know um uh objects of consumerism right you're you, you, you're making your children aware of the value of brands at that such a young age which is probably what not you what not the thing that you kind of want to do especially with impressionable children again i'm not one to tell people what to do with their kids but it could be argued that's a bit questionable regardless right so you get these things happen a lot in vogue paris sometimes vogue paris will always have a shoot here and there with a, with a girl done up in like really glamorous makeup and wearing high heels and makeup and shit and all the feminists and all the people that object to that stuff will go crazy but then on second on another hand we have uh, beauty pageants where you know the beauty the natural beauty of girls is kind of um um showcase for judges and people to rate upon on the stage and the, and the and the parents are kind of pushing them to perform um uh at a more you know demanding pace time in time again so again the too young thing is a kind of a weird argument to flow in it because you know the very nature of of fashion nowadays has been that the over the over glorification of youth right so if the if your over glorification of youth is happening then you're gonna have to keep going younger and younger and younger in order to kind of get some new fresh faces involved in the industry and it's hard, it's sad it's objectification i know but until the fashion industry changes its lens and stops kind of concentrating only on people that are, are like 21 and under which is i've always thought is weird anyway especially if you want to sell like you know you're selling you're selling clothes by a luxury brand right um uh, to people that who have um, high levels of disposable income who are necessarily going to be older but the people walking in the runway are young i never understood that which is why i always love magazines like fantastic man right because they did a very good job at kind of like you know it's fast it's fantastic man it could be a kid that's 16 it could be a guy that's 82 it's about celebrating uh manhood in all its different guises and that's what you want to see in a luxury fashion show you don't want to just see a kid that's like 18 uh, a spotty 18 year old wearing this like amazing python skin shirt right because it doesn't make any sense because you're the one's gonna be wearing it you've got a bit of a gut you're a bit short you arch your back a little bit it's not you don't necessarily know how it's gonna look on you anyway because the kid that's wearing it looks nothing like you um and again it's, it's it's strange so i think everyone has a responsibility in this again it's, it's a holistic thing that doesn't that isn't just gonna be easily solved by getting gosh Jinsky the fuck out of here it requires brands in general and the, and the kind of you know the media that surrounds it to kind of change the conversation and to kind of you know um ask these brands to have people on the runway that actually that actually reflect their customer base and also ask some of these brands and people that are involved in it to have maybe a better moral compass in terms of how they're communicating and contacting the people that want to be involved in their in their um collections and stuff um anyway um let, let me continue um blah 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 um where should the draw line be drawn how young is too young what's acceptable to ask and who contacts whom even if Robjinski is telling the truth and he was merely asking for photos that would be used for street casting is it acceptable for designers for anyone to make these requests well of course because you need the pitch how else are you going to get the pictures that's what i'm saying cam wolf is talking a bit about his awesome in a bit of sjw in this regard how else are you going to do it let's take away the creepiness right if i am asking kids that i want it's like um it's like a what do you call it um american apparel during this you know 
during his glory years. Um, how else are they going to get um, young and impressionable girls who don't mind wearing scantily clad clothes to also pose on their magazine shoots if they don't have other girls that look like them doing the magazine shoots and having a little bit of the contact thing at the bottom saying, if you want to be a model on the next shoot, email this email address. You're always, of course, you have to send pictures of what you look like. Like I can't have people flying in. That just, that just saves money. It saves money and time for everyone involved because if you don't look right, I can just tell you about email you don't look right. So have you having to fly in, get a hotel, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't make any sort of sense. So that's the only way you can do it. I guess the only other way to do it maybe is to have like an automatic response system where a kind of an intern, someone that's um, a, a, um, someone that isn't so close to the brand is sort of like detached away from it and kind of just reply in a sort of like formulaic way, age, location, um, upper body pick uh, from the back, from the side, lower body, do you know what I mean? That kind of way. But I think it's quite cool that somebody that makes the brand is also communicating with you and telling you that he wants you to be part of it. I think for the, especially for the kids, that want to be street casting these things, they, they could sometimes maybe think it's not true. So I think they're being trolled or someone's trying to catfish them. So to have like the actual gosher dude send a picture, no, it's actually me. I, I want you to be part of my um, next, I don't know, next runway show, whatever it may be. I think that's quite a cool thing to do. Um, again, I don't know the, I'm waiting for more evidence. I don't know if it's actually true, if he's actually engaging in other malpractices involved with little children. That, that again, throws a whole argument out the, out the window. But I think if you're a brand that is centered around youth culture and you're uh, designed who is a kind of a celebrity designer quote unquote. he's not major Mark Magella. he's not someone that no one knows what he looks like he's very um he's very present in this in the kind of you know uh fashion scene he he walked the runway for Vetema one time and um, he's out and about he but does book signing it's probably cool for you then to also communicate with your people that are your core hosts that want to be part of your brand um, what Wojcicki was accused of doing so is, is so uh, normalized within the fashion industry. I don't think it's, no one normalizes this sort of stuff. I don't know what this guy's talking about. According to Zara Seth, founder of Model Rights Group, Model Alliance. What normalize? What's normalized? The fact that uh, a, 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 someone can ask you for pictures of what you look like. This is strange. That is kind of predatory act is common. We hear almost every day. Of course, there's gonna be there's gonna be people that are gonna be that are gonna take advantage of that idea of like send me a picture. It's gonna be people that take It's gonna be. Really, models or perspective or prospective models that are going to be easily uh, led into situations that they didn't necessarily want to be in i understand that but i don't think it's like a i don't think it's a bad it's a representation of how bad the industry is i just think that's just um human nature if you give someone the ability or the power to get people in to get people to send them pictures of themselves topless then it's gonna be so some people. If someone's a bad dude, they're gonna take advantage of that of that scenario. But I don't necessarily think there's an, another way to do it. Even if you're a plus size model, you're gonna have to send in pictures of what your body looks like. No one's no one's really immune from that regard. Um. Uh. Anyway, the article continues. Um. This lady from the Model Eight Alliance says, "We hear almost every day from people who believe they have been a victim of a scam. Individuals pose as professional photographers, scouts, or agents to elicit photos and arrange meetings with aspiring models. In some cases, scam artists are engaged in sex trafficking under the guise of provoking model opportunity. Which, again, I think in 2018, with the amount of documentaries out there, with the amount of materials out there, for you to get kind of like tricked into sending, into going to a photo shoot with some CD dude and behind some, you know." crappy apartment building somewhere you know you have to kind of look at yourself through the mirror there's a lot of resources out there again these stories are very true you have to look i, I remember there was a very episode for a tv show called gomorra an italian crime mob uh, tv show that was fucking amazing and it kind of details the sort of like sex trafficking ring that operates in in, in in certain parts of eastern europe and you can kind of see how easy it is for people in those kind of dire situations who are kind of having to support a whole family can kind of easily get led in that kind of situation but i think nowadays in western europe with all the resources that we have i think it's very very hard for a kid to be duped into kind of being sent a list send a list of pictures to a brand that aren't going to be used for any sort of promotional activity or whatever i don't think that's going to happen um but again i could be wrong um, as a statement from Rajinsky representative explains, success of Gosh's brand is relying on that connection to teenagers. And from a consumer perspective, it's hard to ignore that many customers of publications, including ours, have have valorized the uh, Rajinsky's obsessive with um, youth culture. Um, along with the statement, the representative also supplied GQ with screenshots, messages, and comments from models who worked with Rajinsky in the past. Exactly, uh, skater and model Tima Mikhanov, who appeared on um, Tim. Timur Mir Karimov, who appeared in the Gostrzynski's lookbooks and a pair and a part of Pakbev Russian skate team, for which Gostrzynski creates a brand. And Toj Gucci, a representative of Zion, initially reached out about model opportunity. Mirokov met Gostrzynski, and nothing bad happened. The casting person and lookbook time. Another model, Slava Dolan, told Gigi that he met. That's that's such a Russian endorsement, isn't it? Like nothing bad happened. The casting process and look time. It's like a lookbook time. Like, Jesus Christ, man! If that's your boy, and he's let you be part of Pakbev. Like, come on, man, fight at least harder for him. Nothing bad happened during the cast.
podcasting process and lookbook time. Like, fuck me. <laughs> you need friends when you've got a friend in Packbeth. Um, another model, Slava Dolan, told GQ that he met the designer at a party for a friend, so he did not go through a casting process. Dolan added that he does message directly with Jinsky and has never asked for a type of photo designer asked for a slurving. Many of these models whom Jinsky have introduced to GQ echo that they have communicated with Jinsky and messaging apps and denied that anything inappropriate took place, which of course does, doesn't prove Jinsky's innocence in the case of slurving and may only serve to emphasize that it isn't an everyday way of conducting business. Hold on. So it doesn't prove his innocence that no one else has said anything else about his illicit behavior, but it does go to prove that what that isn't the everyday. Con- what the fuck? This uh, anyway, this article is fucking confusing. Intensity of which, especially with the banner response to these accusations by riffing the statements provided by different outlets and comparing dozens of pieces and those of evidence puts a fine point on how desperately Gosha's brand needs Gosha the person. Of course, it's Gosha Rudzinski. It's not Alexander McQueen. Do you know what I mean? It, it doesn't have like a long storied history within fashion. It doesn't have an empirical, an, um, you know, one of a kind talent behind the brand. It has a guy that was able to tap into, you know, youth culture of the moment, make very niche products that are, you know, pretty ordinary by and by and large, by the way of look. But he has a certain appeal that the moment you take him away from the brand, the brand dies. Now, of course, they could easily just like Mesa Margiela him and like, you know, announce that he's left, but he's not really left and he's actually designing from the background. But, you know, like the, the fashion, fashion industry, industry is small. If the people find out that he's actually still designing and he hasn't actually left, then it would actually kill his brand further. But yeah, of course they're going to fight for the brand. Like people's jobs are on the line, man. And if this is just like a an anecdotal occasion or if this is just one slip up in his career or what, I don't know, whatever it may be, then I understand them, again, um, fighting very, very hard for it. But again, it riffs onto it. It gets, it gets a little bit SJW in this regard. The Cam Wolf dude is a little bit like that anyway from the stuff I see of him on social. But regardless, anyway, I think the lesson to be learned here of I think for kids watching or for kids listening, I think be careful of the people that you idolize. Be careful of the people that you put up on the pedestal and don't go all in. I think nowadays, especially with the advent of social media, we have the access to these kind of brands and see their kind of origin story. We can kind of communicate with other people that are fans of their brands too. And we can, it, it also demystified the idea of having a show on Paris Fashion Week or during Paris Fashion Week or being supported by a big conglomerate like um, Comme des Garçons Group. Or if you go on Double Street Market and you go into the t-shirt space and see some of the brands that listed on there, some of them are brands that have been are run out of someone's apartment, right? The we the this the this mystification of fashion or street overall is a great benefit to all young people out there because what it shows is that you if you have great ideas and you have hard work and you have good work ethic and you have a team around you you also or you just have a passion or you have a drive you can also do exactly the same thing Gosh Rudzinski has done you don't need to make yourself submissive to his whims and wants in order to kind of get into the industry if anything. Making your own way, carving your own lane, uh, being an ambassador for your own community within your own little niche is a better way of garnering the attention of people that you re- you respect and idolize because they're, they're going to respect you back as a peer instead of respecting you as like, instead of kind of communicating to you as like an avid fan and and, and, and kind of requesting anything under the sun from you. And you're going to, when he says jump, you're going to jump because you just want to be part of his co- um, cohort of kids. I think nowadays kids need to be more aware of who they're idolizing and also aware of the fact that you can just do the same thing that he does. You don't need to be a a model for Gosha Jinsky. You don't need to be begging to go into a show. You don't need to beg to kind of go to a book signing or to get him to kind of recognize you. You can do exactly the thing that he's doing for your own community. And the more able that you're able to do that, the more able you're able to kind of bring in your friends and give your friends jobs and put other people on in your group, the better it is for everyone involved. And you can stop this sort of like nonsense, nasty behavior happening because this is just something that's happened. This is something that's been happening or prevalent within the fashion industry because they were gatekeepers. Because it was so hard to get into the industry, it was easy for them, for people that had nasty intentions to manipulate those people that were desperate to kind of get given a chance. And that's when models get taken advantage of, interns don't get paid, blah, 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 blah. But when now, what, but now the dislocation of fashion has happened and we all get, get to see that t-shirts are t-shirts no matter who they're made by, graphics are graphics no matter who they're made by, it means that kids just like you just like yourself whoever's listening can go out there and do exactly the same thing you don't need to be um what you call it um submissive um to such you know nasty behavior as this and again until it's proven you know he's innocent until proven guilty but i think a lesson to be learned from it is be careful who you idolize and do not do not under any circumstances think just because this guy is on that i need to be put on by him no you could put yourself on by doing your own thing make your own brand make your own scene uh make your own skate team you don't need these guys to put you on you can do it yourself it's easy just put in the work you've got something called google do the necessary research that needs to be done and go out there and make it happen that's my um i think um overall statement on the whole thing